Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Some people call it a cron job, a batch job, a scheduled task, whatever you call it. It's a process that runs periodically, usually looking at the state of the database to determine some action to perform. If you've dealt with this, you know that it can be a nightmare for a couple reasons. First is usually this work isn't done in isolation. If you have many different records to process, if there's a failure along the way, get ready for a page. And usually in the middle of the night because that's when these things usually run. So what's the alternative? Well, tell your system to do something in the future. This video is brought to you by Event Store DB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Recently, I placed an online order to a big box store, but not to be shipped to me, but rather be picked up. So this is the order confirmation email that I get that says, thank you for your order. But what's interesting here, right, is that they say, once your order is ready for pickup, we'll email you again. And that's because an employee at the store has to physically go get the item off the shelf and reserve it for me. I've done a video about the reservation pattern, so check that one out where I also use this example. Now, once they actually go and reserve the item, then I get this second email that says your order is being is ready to pick up. Great. But here's the interesting thing is that in this bottom corner here, a part of the email, it says that I have seven days to pick up this item. If I do not pick it up in seven days, then I'll be refunded, whatever this the charge was, as well as that item is going to go back on the shelf for somebody else to order. So at seven days, there's an expiry. There's something that needs to trigger to do the refund and put the item back on the shelf. So how will we implement that? So let's walk through the scenarios. The first one is the happy path and we don't. So when I place my order, we have an order placed of event. That's what kicked off that first email that I got. Then the employee went and picked out the item from the actual shelf and reserved the item for me. So that was the second, the order reserved event that triggered that second email. And then I go drive to the store, pick up the item, and essentially I complete that reservation. So there's another event that occurs and everything's good. But what happens when I don't show up? So I placed my order, the employee went and reserved it, but I just never showed up for seven days. What's gonna trigger that expiration of that reservation to cause the refund? Well, if we were using some type of batch job, cron job, scheduled task, whatever you wanna call it, what would happen is when our order was saved to our database, we may have some periodic job that runs, let's say daily. When it runs, it's gonna look at the database, look at the state to determine what are all the orders that still are outstanding where they haven't been picked up, but they were placed seven days ago. So it may make that request to the database. And once it gets all that data, that's when it has to do all the refunds and then do some notification to the store that it actually, say the next day, ends up having to put all these items back on the shelf. But therein lies the issue is if it had a hundred different orders that it had to deal with, what happens if there's a failure? Usually these batch jobs are done not in isolation, but all together. And most times, like I said, they're done in the middle of the night. So what's the way kind of a, to avoid this so that we can get all this work done in isolation so that if there is a failure, we can deal with that one particular order, not potentially a hundred. So what we want to do is remind ourselves in the future to do that expiry of that reservation. So what that looks like is our orders placed. But the moment we reserve that product where the employee goes and gets it off the shelf and then marks it as reserved, we immediately tell ourselves in the future, seven days from now, we create basically a reminder that's going to execute some code that's going to expire that reservation. So at that point, we'll, it will do the refund and notify the store to put the item back on the shelf. Now, if I do show up at the store and I complete that reservation, which ultimately completes my order, that, uh, that expire uh, reservation can still run. It can still run when it was actually supposed to. That just means it doesn't need to do anything because it will look at the state of the order and see it's completed now, so it can just exit. So one way to accomplish this and to notify ourselves in the future to do something is by using a queue that supports delayed delivery. So what that looks like is we have our sender, we're gonna send a message to the queue, but along with that, we're gonna tell the queue to delay delivery by a period of time, in our case, seven days. So what that means that is once it's there, our consumers, they don't even see it's there. They may request to our queue, but our queue's not gonna send that message because it hasn't elapsed that delayed delivery time that we specified. Now this can kind of feel like the invisibility timeout that happens on the consumer side where a consumer consumes a message 
and no other consumer can see that message. That's the invisibility timeout. But this is different because it's happening from the other side. This is our sender telling the queue, here's a message, and I want to delay delivery by this period of time. So once that time, the delayed delivery time um, expires or we've gone past that time, at that point, now our message looks like it's available. So our consumer at this point can request to get the next message from the queue. And since it's available now, now it can consume that message. So with this model, what we can do is eliminate kind of these batch jobs and rather send messages to ourselves in the future to tell work that we need to do in the future. And again, these are per order, so they're gonna be consumed and done in isolation. I wanna say thank you to all the developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really, really do appreciate your support. If you wanna get access to a private Discord server to communicate with other like-minded developers about software architecture and design and any code I showed at any of the videos, check out the link in the description on how to join. So to illustrate this, I'm using the reservation pattern because it does exactly what I'm talking about. And the idea that we're gonna reserve something, but we need to have some expiry to remove that reservation. So my example is kind of like a user sign up registration process that has multiple steps. And the first part of that step is actually just reserving the username that you wanna use. So here's my reserved username command. And this is gonna be picked up off of a queue. So the first thing we do to check is to see if we can reserve that username. And if we can, then the second thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating an expire reservation command that we're gonna send with a del uh, delayed delivery of 10 seconds. So that's exactly that. We're notifying ourselves 10 seconds in the future to try to expire this reservation. So if I look at the expire reservation, what it does is again, this will be executed 10 seconds afterwards at least. And we're gonna to check to see, is the reservation still there? Because maybe the registration signup process completed and we're good, at that point we can just return. But if the reservation is still there, that means that something went wrong or it didn't happen in that 10 seconds. So that way we can actually expire that reservation for that username and let somebody else go through the signup process. I've added a couple breakpoints as well as some logic to kind of illustrate a failure in the middle so the expiry actually occurs. So I have two usernames that's gonna work. Derek is the one that's just gonna work, the registration process will work. And if I call test the first time, it's actually gonna fail. So you'll see what happens here. So my first username is Derek. Everything worked. I was able to reserve the username. It all worked fine. I'm gonna register test, but it failed. There was some part of the account creation that failed. Now, if we wait a few seconds here, now we've hit a breakpoint. This is on the expire reservation. But because it's going to happen, no matter for whether it succeeded or not, because the moment we reserved, we did this, we can see it's the username, the first one that I did, it's Derek that it's actually trying to um, remove the, uh, the reservation. But we've already completed our, our sign-up process, so it's not even reserved anymore. So we're just, we're good. So now if I run this again, I'm going to hit the break again. Now this one is for test. So test the part of the process failed that I made fail in this example. So now we can jump through this, we can expire that username and we can continue on. So now I've kind of set this up again that if I re register test again, it's actually gonna work. And if I give it a few seconds here, the same type of thing will occur where I'll hit my breakpoint for this expire reservation. Here it is. So now test worked the second time, so it's no longer reserved and we can just return. Batch jobs, scheduled jobs, cron jobs, whatever you want to call them, they're periodic processes that run that are looking at data historically, kind of the way things are now to try to figure out what should happen. These are often done off hours because that's when there's kind of less load, you're kind of off peak load. And that's because these processes usually require a lot of data to query and a lot of actions to be performed but you can kind of smooth out that out so you don't have these off hour batch jobs where you're doing a hundred plus different actions. Rather, you can tell yourself in the future to do something. This smooths out that load as well as it provides that isolation. So you're not doing things in batch, you're doing things one at a time when you said to do them in the future. As my example was showing for the username or an order, it was just gonna be that expiry happening one at a time in isolation. If there's a failure with one of them, it's just the one, not a hundred. And they're not happening necessarily all in the middle of the night. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.